for those just starting out, to those who built their reputation. In the detail industry, navigating the course is a daily grind. This is Play by Play, with industry professionals tackling topics and offering tips to help improve your game plan. Now, here's your Play by Play. Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? Happy Friday. Uh, we got the Detail Bookie play-by-play -play back at you. Today, you'll notice that uh, my co-host here looks a little <laughs> bit different, not the normal Jackson. We've actually got Dustin's father, Mr. Billy Jackson. Uh, Mr. Billy is with us. He is the actual business development manager for Easy In, and he also works with us here at uh, Detail Bookie. And, man, you're just a, a huge asset to the team. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, it's always a pleasure. And today we've actually got Keith Duplissy coming on from PNS products uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about a uh, special we just we're actually going to get a scoop today mr <laughs> billy uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about a product they're about to release they're actually going to be doing a full unveil of it next week um, but it's uh, for, for you show car guys you're not going to want to miss this interview man he's got something special coming at you sure does yes and uh he filled us in with some other surprises as well. Oh, right? that's so, right. It's yeah, going so to be, be a good interview. Good. That's right. Now, Dustin, where, where, you want to tell us where Dustin's at right now? Dustin's, uh, my understanding is getting some sand between the toes and some much needed uh, relaxation. If they can take his phone away from him. Oh, man, there's no way they'll get it out of his hands. <laughs> I mean, that man does never stop. He knows one gear, and that's, that's go. Right. That's exactly right. So it's going to be pretty cool. We've actually, um, Mr. Billy is going to tell us a little bit about himself and his role here at uh, Easy In. So um, t tell us a little bit about what you do for, for the company. Well, um, I'm the business development manager, and kind of my role is I get the opportunity to go out and meet with our customers, our dealers, um, get in front of some of the jobs before they come to the shop to, um, and we'll talk a little bit about pricing in a minute, but it, it lets the customer not wait till they get here to get sticker shop. We're able to talk about the process and what it's going to take to get, whether it's their boat, car, RV camper. And I'll be I, honestly, I'm a little bit jealous. Mr. Billy's always cutting out to go to a marina or, you know, <laughs> go down to the beach. And, and you know, that, that's got to be awesome getting there on site and checking out these boats. So when you go down there, you're actually going to assess kind of what, what all the vehicle, our vessel, RV, whatever it is, um, kind of what the process is. You explain it to the customers on what we're going to do to it based on kind of the condition. Yes, absolutely. You know, oxidation levels, mode levels. Um, and, and what do they want done? What are their expectations so that when we deliver it back to them, it is met? You know, we've exceeded that, hopefully, in most cases. So. And setting those realistic exp uh, um, expectations, I mean, I think it's an incredibly huge part of this business. Uh, the last thing you want is a customer that's that's got this, you know, idea in mind. And then if it doesn't, you know, meet his expectations, then he feels like, you know, he didn't get his money's worth. So Absolutely. You know, really giving them a, a, a good understanding of what all you're going to do, plus, you know, kind of an idea of what that price is going to look like that way you're right they're not going to get sticker shock as soon as they pull up and That's we're right. quoting them a few thousand dollars you know uh well there's a lot of boats on the water today as we well know and they go back into these marinas or or to robinson island for us that live here on the gulf coast or or all that's that sells our business, you know, that that's that's easy in sitting there. So we want that to be sold and it helps take us to another level. That's awesome. And and that's kind of like the boat show as well. You know, Absolutely. you you get to meet those boat owners, you get to meet the the manufacturers and, that's, right. and that's just a, a way to get your foot in the door for the detailing business. Yes it is. That's awesome, man. So um uh, let's see here. So we got Keith coming on, and we'll bring him on in just a few minutes. Um, I know that uh, we were also want to talk a little about about in addition to you going out there and, and talking about the you know what all the the boat or RV is going to need done to it. Um, also, pricing is a deal that you know you're able to give a, a pretty basic you know a, a good estimate if you pull out your software, uh, you know your detail bookie software. We um, price out all our vessels and and the um, RVs by the foot by the linear foot, and so you got different packages and uh, I imagine. And you can just pull out your phone and give them a little estimate right there on site that's pretty fairly accurate so when they get here too they got a, a good understanding absolutely we can in, in our case we're fortunate enough that we have candace and gabby at the shop so we um dustin and i no longer give prices on the road um if we have to we can it's very available and it does work for but for us at easy and it works best to go that route and keep some communication on the same level absolutely and i'm sure hearing the price out of a, a, a lovely young lady's absolutely. mouth is a little bit easier to, to swallow than candace I, is very good at that is, <laughs> oh man that's so awesome so um i guess we'll, we'll go ahead and bring keith on and let's absolutely. see what uh what what all he's got going on today
All right, as Jessica's bringing up Keith, we'll just, um, just have a little dead air. There he is. Hey! What's up there, Keith? So we're not, there you go. Oh, man, you're out there next to Air Force One. That's awesome. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah, the magic of a green screen, right? Or a virtual background. So that's right. uh, I was going to put the 60th anniversary logo up there, but that's a lot of red. So we'll, we'll forego <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, man. So how about that? 60 years. You guys are celebrating this year's 60 year anniversary. That's pretty impressive. 60 years, yeah. Yeah. So, now, um, so started in San Francisco as kind of a route jobber truck company. Uh, that's how we started. And uh, eventually when Bob and Dave, the next generation, were the, the current owners, uh, went to their dad and said, you know, we can make a lot of our own stuff. Dave, uh, Bob's brother, a lot of people don't know who Dave is. Dave is the, uh, the older brother of Bob Phillips. And everybody kind of knows Bob because he's our trade show guy and he's our president, he's our front guy. But Dave is our chemist. He's, a, he's actually a school trained chemist. Uh, with advanced certificates in surface technology. So perfect for the auto wax car polishing business. So yeah, the brothers kind of 30 plus years ago went to their dad and said, hey, we got a plan. We want to make our own stuff. We're going to you know, take everything in house. And uh, that train has been rolling now for really half of our, our entire uh, history, which is really, wow. really awesome. So that is awesome. Uh, yeah, super proud. I don't know that anybody thought 60 years was going to happen. You know, uh, nobody starts a business thinking 60 years from now it's going to be rolling. So, <laughs> right. and now there's a very unique product that you guys offer that uh, uh, I think you've got a 60th year, um, you said a celebratory uh, uh, item there. So, you guys are the number one coffee selling detail comp or detail products company. Is that correct? <laughs> I think so, only because I think we're the only one doing it. Um, yeah, so we have two lines of coffee. Uh, about four or five years ago, uh, Bob and I were looking around going, what do we do for Christmas presents for our, our distributors? You know, we, we try to do something to show some appreciation every year. Uh, and the idea of coffee, we'll, make, we'll have coffee, you know, especially coffee made. Uh, and it was a hit, and we called it Swirl Killer Coffee. Uh, so this year, in honor of our 60 years, we... Uh, we cranked it up and put out a new blend. So with the new blend came the new coffee mug. Um, awesome. So we're on version two of the coffee mug and uh, and we're on our second iteration of coffee. So, uh, you know, we thought, hey, this will go out. It'll be great, it's a Christmas gift. Uh, and then people said, well, how do we get more of it? Can we buy it? And so all of a sudden we were in the coffee business. And, uh, you know, if you know us, we're, we're, we're big coffee guys. I mean, we called our, our uh, double black kind of preview tour the Swirl Killer Tour, and that's kind of stuck to our coffee brand, and it's been a lot of fun, you know. Um, we don't have a ton of coffee culture, but we, we are coffee folks. So if you've ever met Sydney Gwynn, uh, it is all about the coffee before we do anything. So we've got, if we don't have our morning coffee, you know, we're, we're not off on the wrong foot, but boy, we, we need a little jet fuel every once in a while. Right, it definitely right. gets us going as well around here. We're uh, big coffee drinkers, and I'll definitely have to get my hands on some of that swirl killer. I think that's a... a we'll send you some. I'll, I will get some sent. <laughs> So do you want to tell us a little bit about what you got in the background photo there? So I know I've been watching on Facebook, um, seeing a lot of different uh, posts. It's that time of year. And um, you guys were, were honored to, you know, be able to, to detail the Air Force One there. Yeah. So fortunately, our lead brand spokesperson, which is Rennie Doyle, um, uh, 20, actually 20 years ago, uh, got an opportunity because I don't know if you've ever seen on a plane the little wingtips that curve up. Mm -hmm. Well, the guy who created those uh, asked Rennie if he would come do some test spots on what is behind me, the original Air Force One. So this is the first jet age uh, presidential aircraft. So it actually doesn't have the title Air Force One by tail number. Its tail number is, is a unique tail number because um, we didn't, you know, nobody knew back in the, the late fifties when Eisenhower commissioned it, it was gonna be, you know, what it is. Um, so its twin is in the, uh, Dayton, Ohio Air Force Museum. And this plane is Kennedy's plane, and it is at the Mo wow. Boeing Museum of Flight. That is awesome. So, really cool. So, 20 years ago, he got invited to go up and do test spot, and they asked him if he'd do the project. And so, he took his own company with his own employees up there and did the project and handed them a big bill. And, you know, as the story goes, they said, Well, would you mind donating some of that bill 
Uh, and of course, you know, you're a private business owner, you just closed your business for two weeks, you went up there, you did the project. <laughs> Big pill to swallow to do that. But one of the things that got him was a, was a personal meeting with the president of the United States, the sitting president, George W. Uh, and he got the official title designation of uh, detail of Air Force One. And so Rennie's being Rennie, and I think this is the coolest thing people need to understand about that. He could have taken that and just use it for his own ego and his own business. But what he did with his coaching business was he took it as an opportunity to get the guys who are behind me, most of whom are independent detail shop owners. Some have one employee, some have 20, some have just themselves. And he took it as an opportunity to invite them to it, to get them made, you know, put on the team. And they use that as an opportunity to let their local market know that they do something special. They work on a really unique aircraft, right? I mean, how many guys can say they've detailed Air Force One? I can tell you it's under 100 guys right now. So, you know, that's a special thing. So he did that to promote the industry. And about seven years ago, PNS got involved with Rennie and, and we started a sponsorship of the program. So we are now the lead sponsor for the program. Uh, so each year we go up and you can kind of see the, the, the titles of everybody there. There's a lot of folks here. I wish I could get out of the way a little better. But every one of those signs is, is a sponsor of the event. Um, PNS being one of the lead sponsors. Um, and it's a great way for Rennie to give back to guys who who contribute to the industry, great detailers. Um, it's a great way to get back to our country. Uh, and it is a fun as heck project. Now this year, to last year, COVID got us. No project. Yeah. You know, I had to shut everything down. This year we went with, with 19 guys. There. So normally this picture from you know here to here on my head, it's filled with people. And we got three rows of guys because uh, there's 60 or 65 people on the project. So 19 guys that went up there this year. We did really two primary planes, uh, T-square, which is the B-29, all aluminum body. Uh, we polished that out. And then we did Air Force One and a couple other planes. And what a great week. Um, the camaraderie and people will tell you, oh, it must be cool to work on the plane. The coolest part about this project is sitting around with those 19 guys at night and having those existential conversations about detailing and business and how to balance life and the challenges that come with all that, that's the growth and that's yeah. the cool. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw the Road FX guys there, those are our buddies, you know, uh, software, um, you know, guys, I was so jealous. I was like, what do we gotta do to to, uh, to, to get on that list of, of uh, you know, some sponsors for the Air Force One? So you might have to throw our name in the hat, you know, next year. Uh, since you guys are up there. Well, Chris Woolman is your guy to reach out to, um, right. and he can kind of walk you through the sponsorship part. If you want to be a team member, you got to train with Rennie. Let's first be a participating member of the Detailers Network uh, and, and really be involved in our group. Our, you know, we're a subgroup. Uh, by the way, we strongly support the IDA, so it's not like we're a competing organization. Uh, we, we, we flow the same direction. Uh, and earn your way onto the team. And there were eight rookies this year, which is literally just a little under half the team. Uh, and, you know, rookies, man, for rookies, they killed it. They were fantastic guys this year. So we were really super, super blessed to have a strong, strong team that really just went up there, put its head down and ground away and got the job done. Cool. Now, speaking of the IDA, you have a, a bit of a personal history with the IDA, do you not, sir? I do. So I used to work for a guy named Bud Abraham at Detail Plus, a company I have now purchased and, and own and run myself. Uh, but uh, Bud founded the IDA. So that was kind of our third industry attempt at getting an, an industry association. Uh, and this one stuck. We got a great board of directors. Um, if I rattle off the name of those first guys on the board of directors, let's put the companies in there. So, you know, um, just fantastic people, guys like Prentice Sinclair. Uh, Eric Jeffries, who was with Cyclotool, which is now owned by Rupes, um, you know, companies like John, John Bell with Pro Products, um, right. you know, just some great, really strong people, Automagic and, and those guys, everybody came together and we made it happen. It was a hard time, but we are on year 13 with the organization. Oh, wow. And uh, next year, we will celebrate 10 years of IDA certification. Oh, so, man, awesome. you know, that's, I think that's really a milestone for the industry. Uh, I joined the board about a year after it started uh, by the invitation of then president Rick Goldstein. Um, 
And, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, did a term as president, then did a second term as president nice, yep. <laughs> um, and stuck around on the board for quite a while until it became really apparent to me that um, I've done everything I can do. This is this is, needs to go to the next level. And there are great people in our industry to take it there. Super happy to see DJ Patterson uh, and this year's yes. board doing the, the great stuff that they do. So um, strong organization doesn't exist without the help of Cheryl Hazard. But uh you know, we have some great, great folks involved with that association, including our Founders Club members uh, and our sponsors. So, and actually, uh, Dustin, Jackson, you know, I hear a lot of talk. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. Dustin Jackson actually got put on um, several uh, committees and we just got a notification. So he's actually going to join us on the podcast via uh, Zoom. You want to let Dustin in here? There he is. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> What's up, up guys? Here? How you doing? Can y'all see me okay? Or is it bright? Fine. Well, uh, it's bright, little... but you know. <laughs> yeah, man. You oh, hold on. Let me uh, let me adjust there. some settings real quick. Hang on. Bear with me just a second. And we were just talking Let's earlier about here. how Dustin All right, I just wanted y'all to see that. I don't care if you see my face. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the, uh, I guess you guys can see the background. Let me save this. All right. Let me see here. So you can't really see my face, I don't think. No, Maybe it's dark. Might... I mean, it's you a beautiful background, but your face is lovely. Face. You might want to spin around. All right, and, let's uh, try that. I just wanted you guys to see the beach. I wanted to see you where uh, y'all to see where I'm sitting. Uh, but y'all are doing great. I miss everybody back at the shop, uh, Keith. I hate that uh, I was out during this uh, during this podcast, but uh, but Good. I wanted to jump in and say hey and and uh, just you know talk to y'all for a minute. Well, I'll tell you, Dustin. One of the cool things is is where you are. Um, I think our industry too often, you know, we. We were all about the grind, and we're not about that right there, which is the little That's ones, right. the family. So it's That's super right. awesome that you are on vacation. Um, yeah. No better place to be than to be not working if, if you're not going to be on the podcast. So I love yeah. it. Exactly. Right. You know, and, and kudos to the team back there at the shop for, for keeping everything, uh, you know, running smooth and uh, not, you know, I think they've all kind of made a, a pack not to bother me too much and uh, they've done a great job. I see my dad jumping in on the podcast. You sound great, dad. Well, thank um, and and, yeah, and just thank for them, man, because without them, this isn't possible. Um, we spent a lot of years where this wouldn't have been possible. Um, but, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's really cool. It's a really cool experience and uh, we're having a great time, but, but to be honest with you, ready to, ready to get back to the grind for sure. <laughs> Well, enjoy that time, and, and we'll see you soon. I know I we got a committee meeting coming up here fairly soon. You're on the Trade Show and Education Committee, which is awesome. Uh, yes, sir. We're super excited about that, um, and I can't can't wait till we get together soon. Uh, I know I'm going to Mobile Tech in a couple of weeks uh, after we get done with the, the next big event, which is the uh, Hell Beach Week. But, uh, dude, I, I'm super excited with your involvement and with you know with your what you guys are doing. You're right. Ten years ago maybe 15 years ago, uh, these conversations didn't happen and this kind of stuff wasn't going on. So, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and you know, I'm excited to be involved. And like I told you guys, you know, y'all use me where you see best fit, but, um, I, I appreciate everything that the IDA brings to the uh, industry. And I think it's important and I love to see more and more guys join and more and more guys involved. Um, so I think that the, the, the bigger our network becomes, the, the stronger the industry gets. And I think that it just does nothing but help us professionalize, help us um, be more of a unified front. And um, so it's something that the industry needs and, and, and I believe in it. So happy to be involved and happy to help. Cool. Well, one of the things Bob Phillips will tell you, and you know, um, PNS has grown tremendously the last 10, 15 years. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the best decisions I think he'll tell you he ever made was getting back involved in the industry. And the way that we were able to do that was the IDA. And, and it's changed the PNS uh, business, it's changed it's changed my life. I mean, I, I got to tell you, the people that I've gotten to meet and the friends I have in this business wouldn't have uh, without the IDA. So, um, you know, the only challenge I give to everybody, don't join. Sure. Join and get involved. You know, right. uh, I once had a guy come up to me and say, well, you know, what's in it for me? And I'm like, well, no, wait a minute. What did what did you put into it to get out of it? It's Absolutely. like, look, if you hang the single on the front door of the, of the building, but you don't do anything to get customers in it. You got out of it what you put into it. And so, you know, the thing you get out of the IDA is is the connections, the opportunity to learn from people. Um, I guarantee you there's somebody in our business who's been where you've been, whoever that is and wherever it is, 
Uh, somebody's been in either that deep dark hole or on top of that mountain. And I'm certain that they are willing to share, you know, their experiences with you. And that's at a minimum, that's what you can get out of it. The maximum oh, it can change your life like it has mine. Absolutely. That's absolutely. Awesome. And, you know, I, I think a lot of times, um, I, I'm sure it's just like this in any other industry, but you feel like you're the long man on the totem pole. And when you're fighting those battles or where you're in that position and, you know, it's it's really nice to be able to pick up the phone or call somebody or shoot somebody a text and know that that person's been there before or right. potentially has been there before. And just to hear it isn't even about what they say, but sometimes just getting it off of your chest and, and, and having someone that can relate to it. And uh, so building that network of people that, that do this every day and that are involved, that go through the same struggles, that have the same issues, you know, and, and then have the same uh, successes and the wins. Um, we can all celebrate all of those together, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think it's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I believe in the IDA heavily, and I think that it's going to be bigger and better. And I hope that I, my small contribution can uh, help make that happen. Oh, you're the guy we were looking for to help us go forward. You know, um, I'm one of the old guys now, uh, and I've been around. And, you know, um, one of the things I hate is, well, you know, these, these, you know, these old guys who go, well, back in my day, I don't want to be yep. that guy. I do want to be that. I'll, I'll be a historian for the association so people kind of know where we came from. Sure, but I, sure. we need guys who are like, dude, what can we do next? What's, you know, what's the next challenge? Um, Absolutely. You know, I think the Tom Brady thought process is, you know, what's, what's your favorite championship, Tom? The next one, you know. The next that's, one. I, that's, I, right. I think that's the way it's got to be with the IDA and the business is what's your, what's your favorite, you know, challenge or thing that you've done in the industry? And it's whatever's next, you know. And if you have that mindset, uh, there's some pretty cool stuff that can happen. Well, it, it's funny that you said that. I know that uh, everybody on our team and, and with every company that I'm involved with has that same uh, mindset, and it's very short-term memory. Um, of course, we, we celebrate the wins, but we, we're always looking about what's next and how can we do it bigger, how can we do it better, how can we be more successful, how can we fix what didn't work, and it's a week-to-week, month-to-month, year-to-year thing and uh so of course we do celebrate the wins but um it's very short term and we're back at it and i think that you know with that mindset you know it always keeps you doing better things and uh you know i think it i think it helps yeah absolutely absolutely you know one of the things i want to look guys i want to do the video right now i mean because there's a beach over there what are you doing here <laughs> uh we're down in orange beach um i brought the family down here we've been down here a week um and we're gonna be coming back sometime late tomorrow or sunday morning um but we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do uh, like, the hardest decisions are like the boat the beach the pool you know and, uh, oh, and that's man. really fun. really rough. that's rough <laughs> yeah. man I, I feel for you <laughs> yeah, that's a lot harder than do i Return the emails or yeah, yeah, <laughs> or, or doing a budget review or uh, yeah, <laughs> looking at sales analysis. Um, yeah, no, no, none of that's happening. Actually, I made a pact that uh, with with my family and friends that are here with me that I would be na- making no decisions. And it was so funny. So yesterday we were in my boat and I'd made this pact. I said I'm not making a decision. So y'all tell me what y'all want to do, and that's what we'll do. I don't know. We lost them. You go ahead and ask your question while while uh, he's cut out. Yeah, we um we kind of went through some of that earlier, but um want to touch back on uh, Keith while we we're talking about um kind of where the IDA you know um why, why y'all felt it was needed what 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 brought it what brought it to fruition. I think you know the the challenge is um, as manufacturers distributors. Uh, you know, you have a network of folks, you have contact with the detailers you have contact with. And so we were connected to our industry more than I think detailers were connected to our industry. Mm -hmm. Um, And let's face it, the the industry didn't have a great reputation. Um, And so, you know, it was a thing of, we know that there's something better. And I guess that's the thing. If you know that there's an opportunity to improve your industry and you don't do it, um, I think that's the responsibility. You know, that that's where you've got to, um, not from a high and mighty perspective, but just from a, you know, we can make a difference and do something positive and move things forward. Uh, and I think, you know, when we talk about it, if you look at 15, 18 years ago, you couldn't get a guy from New York to tell a guy in LA what he did to polish a car. Um, like, because what, you're stealing my secret? Trade you know? secrets. And right. I think that was <laughs> sort of our challenge was, we kind of had to get over that, you know, and bring the industry together. We were so fragmented. I mean, we'd go to car wash shows, I'd see the same eight guys. 
and and five of them were manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So you had three real operators involved in the industry and you're like dude there's 15,000 detail shops in America we haven't talked about the rest of the world America and none of them talk to each other and there's no industry for that no other industry really had that going on I mean you look at that security guard companies have an association you know had one that's like dude we're so fragmented this was just what we thought was a way to bring the industry together and it had been done a couple of times before but with the advent of the internet and the ability to to kind of gather in a in a more functional way, um, it finally stuck. You know, not and that because I don't want to say the other associations were bad. They weren't. They just I don't think it was their time. And fortunately for us, we had the right people come together at the right time. We had a great association management group that we aligned with, uh, and it all worked. Or it's working. You know, right. I never want to use the past tense there because <laughs> at, at any moment things can change. But it's working and it's doing what it should do. Uh, can it do more? Hell yeah. And, but that's everything, right? I mean, that's right. Uh, it could do more, but it's doing everything it can do and it, it is moving forward and progressing and with guys like Dustin, it's gonna continue to. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, I wanna kind of shift gears real quick and um, talk about p yes. I know you guys have had a ridiculously crazy last year and this year, I mean, uh, how many products in total have you guys released in the last 12 months? Uh, well, so in the last 18 months, we're at uh, 16 products, uh, not to include our newest line of coffee. Uh, and also, uh, that doesn't include, I think, what's an industry first. We have a PNS University that is our detailing uh, distribution partners network. So all things PNS are there. So everything from price list to product information sheets to videos to our latest podcasts, podcasts. All those things are there as a built-in resource and education center for our, our distribution partners. Uh, and it really, last year, we decided a year before in October, November of 18 that we or 19 that we needed to do it. And when we did it, we didn't know COVID was coming. Mm. But boy, what a powerful tool once we did have COVID. Mm. Uh, and so, and then of course, the other thing we decided in that, you know, end of year meeting in 2019 was we're gonna do 12 products in 12 months. And then COVID hits uh, and it didn't stop us. You know, we continue to do it. And I think a lot of the manufacturers will tell you, it's been a busier last 18, 20 months than it's ever been uh, for us on product sales side. Now I know that there's a, there's a kind of a really almost cliff, you know, canyon type divide of detailers who are just blowing up and doing incredibly good things. And the guys who really struggled hard, it doesn't seem like there's a middle ground there where guys were just doing okay. You either just took off with with the industry for whatever reason when COVID hit, or you kind of just you know it just died, and that's that's tough times. But for the manufacturers, I think we'd all tell you it blew up. So we did twelve products, fourteen products last year. We've done two this year. Our latest is our Legend coating. It's our sixtieth anniversary kind of Keystone product. It's our five year premium coating. Uh, it's under our warranty program, so we have an inspiration is our family of coatings and inspiration is our three year standard um, coating. It's a great product um, that and legend fall under our warranty program. So that third party insurance warranty that can be registered by our authorized installer network. And we don't charge for that. We just make sure you're qualified. Um, so along with soul, our one year coating, our view glass coating, we really rounded out our coating line in the last 12 months. So, if, you know, if you want to look at kind of the big package, that's the number one big package that we did. Uh, that Those two, you know, all the rest of that stuff joined our Inspiration Fabric Coating and our, and our Inspiration Coating to create the family of products. Um, and then, you know, our latest little addition to the family uh, is coming up next week. And you want to talk about going the opposite direction. Um, <laughs> we are going the opposite direction. So um, bead makers, everybody knows, is kind of one of our products that kind of kicked off this whole uh, product line called Double Black, the Rennie Doyle Double Black Diamond line. And people ask me all the time, what does that really mean? Well, Bob and Dave and Rennie and any myself, we're all skiers. And so what's the expert only run? And it's a Double Black Diamond. And so that's where the Rennie Doyle Double Black line came from. So if you'll notice, on a lot of our stuff, we have the diamonds on the logoing, and that's that's the expert only thing. 
Well, what the line really was designed to do was take our, our Keystone product line and boil it down to, you got one compound that you can use because that's, that's the one that's in there. So we're trying to say, this is, this is our best product line. So it's easy for the prosumer to determine what product they should go with because there's only one compound. There's one polish, there's one jeweling polish. And then also to really focus the line down so that you guys, the professionals, um, know, you know, know where the starting point is. We all know there's other stuff and we've, you know, we're a legacy company. We've got 1200 products used. So we've got a lot of product. Wow. But this, this helps kind of clean up the, the introduction, uh, makes it nice and concise. And then, you know, we always get the question from pros like you guys, well, what else have you got? Or I need a thing that, okay. Then we go to our pro series line of products and we, and we pull out some cool stuff. Um, which actually is happening this month is you may have seen a little product that's a bright yellow called undressed. Yes. So that's a tire stripper for car, you know, basically for dressing, old dressing car show cars and have that orangey tire. It's a tire stripper. Um, it's a, it's a reinvigoration of our, what used to be our super white wall cleaner. Mm -hmm. So it's really a rubber and tire cleaner. It's not for the real wheel cleaning, but rubber and tire. Um, so we have some great pro series products that have been with us for years. Uh, and then we've got some really new stuff. So everybody knows bead maker, which is a three to six month durability, you know, missed on wipe off coating. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, not really a coating, but protectant. I don't like to call it a coating, uh, kind of kicked off the entire market of everybody with these SIO2 sprays. You know, we were kind of the first ones to hit that market. Well, now we're going the other way. So we're about to bring out a product next week that is a three three kind of part uh can i guess you will collaboration so working in in team with the rag company uh which is our premier towel company yep. uh with gordon mccall you might have heard of the guy he runs a little thing called mccall's auto rama <laughs> it is the kickoff party to the pebble beach week oh man um gordon is a fantastic guy but he's a 40-year detailer and don't ever forget that wow that Gordon's a detailer at heart and he has embraced the detail mafia. He's embraced PNS. He's got a 40 year relationship with us. Um, he was in his right and in, it still is in his right, a world-class detailer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of his love. If you ask him, he'd rather walk down the stairs from his office and just, you know, kind of fiddle around with polishing on the car if he'd give him the chance. So <laughs> that's, that, that's cool. Um, <laughs> and, and so we've got a new product with the three of us uh, collaborating called Dream Maker. Dream Maker. Now, Dream Maker yes. is a show car spray. Uh, it's pink in color. So um, for you, for the gals out there, Sydney has already got her, her nails done to match the product <laughs> line. It's, it's awesome. Um, Dream Maker is a show car spray. Now, the cool part about this is most of your SIO2 sprays, your beat makers, we like to put them on in non-direct sunlight, you know, in the shade, uh, cooler surface. This product is designed for use in direct sunlight. It can be used at a car show, multiple application product. It is what we call a gloss amplifier. So wow. judges are around the corner, they're eight minutes away. You grab your towel, you grab your product, you put that, that product on and it gives it that pop right there. You know, oh, man, Beat Maker awesome. takes about two hours to really cure up to give you a full pop. Dream Maker, uh, kind of is a is a right away thing, uh -huh. um, and it just adds that little extra pop to it. Um, you know, we don't speak on the durability as far as it's not a five year or three month or whatever. It's going to have some durability. It's going to last on the car, but it's really designed to just make that car show well. Uh, and it's really a prosumer consumer driven product. That's what it's really for. Um, That's awesome. But so we all know detailers who do car shows, and there's going to be oh, hundreds yeah. of us next week in Monterey. What a perfect product for them to kind of put that final kiss on the, on the car. Oh, man, I'd love to see that in action, too. So if, if they, you know, uh, do the, the water test and, and drop it on there right after, I mean, how long does do they have to spray it on before you can do something like that and it still perform? Um, you can do it immediately after. Um, you know, I, don't, I always recommend with every coating, listen to your manufacturer we don't like to top our coating for at least two hours um but this isn't a product for that this is i just drove it in you know from the house to the car show or i got it off the trailer out in the, in the loading yard and i got to drive it down the 
you know, the dusty road and get in my spot on the lawn, whatever, um, you know, but one of the things that's cool about this product is, you know, with the direct sunlight use um, and multiple layers of it on there, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to, you know, cause a problem with buildup or streaking. Um, it allows you some workability. You can, you can apply it right there on the lawn, you know, just as soon as you park, which is the cool part. So if you drive the car off, it is a, a water uh, soluble product in that it won't react adversely to it. So if you had a damp day where you had mist on the lawn, and we're going to find this out for sure in volume on Friday morning, because we also do with that detail team, the McCall's team next week, we do the quail and the quail is on the, the quail uh, golf course. And um, we do those cars all day Thursday. But of course, you're on a lawn on a golf course on the Monterey Peninsula. So some of the best beating shots of paint in the history of the world can be taken at that show before you wipe the cars down. And then we got to wipe the cars down. But once you wipe them down, throwing the dream maker on there is exactly what we're going to do. So we'll have a, a ton of very um, steep learning going on on next week. And we're, I think we're going to have great success. All of our testing has told us it's going to work. It's going to be great. So I that's what that product that. is really designed for fun product. And you know, Guys, if somebody gets their car detailed with you, and this is, I think Gordon said this best. He says, doesn't the guy who really loves his car and fawn, you know, fawns over it, isn't it a show car to him? Right, right. So this really doesn't have to be a show car product, but it certainly, you know, is designed for that segment. And then, you know, dude, my truck, it's coated. It looks great. It's, you know, it's the... Um, I call it the ruby red Ford. So it's it's a pretty paint, you know. I mean, they did a great job on the paint job. That's my show car. I'm not going to have a, you know, I'm not going to have a 68 Challenger because that's not something I would go out and buy or do, sure. but that's my show car. So, you know, for the guy who loves on their car all weekend and does all the self-maintenance and wants to, to make that car pop, there it is. You know, if you're turning over the million dollar car to a customer, if that's you, mm -hmm. don't you want that pop just before you turn it over? Oh, well, that's happen. what this product can help you do. Yeah, we're, and we're seeing more of the more and more of those show cars here. That, so that's um, that brings some interest. That's oh for sure. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look behind you on your on your backdrop. I mean, that that's not a that's not a million dollar car, but that's somebody's baby, right? That's and they love that absolutely. car. And don't tell me that on Saturday next week after they've driven it on their little go down to the, you know, go down with the Porsche Club or whoever they are rolling around with, that they don't want to wipe that car down and make it look great when they stop. Sure. Of course well, they I can tell you, Jeffrey you know. does. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so what a great product for those guys. You know, there's no chance of, I mean, really no streaking. Can be using direct sunlight. The guy we parts it at the vineyard and he wants it to look great, you know, whatever. Um, that's That product is going to be a great product for them. I like it, man. So now, listen, there's one question that I like to ask all of uh, the guys that join the podcast. You've been in the industry as long as you have, um, especially with the IDA. I mean, you'd have some good insight on this. So um, what impact do you see software playing on the detailing industry? Oh, my God. So um, software falls in the same category as the IDA, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a transformative thing, uh, and that is because of technology, you know, uh, one of the things that, that I learned early on about being in a management position of business is if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And the truth be told, um, I got one around here somewhere, you know, the leather bound planner book mm -hmm. for scheduling, um, that gets you only so deep, you know, um, having a ledger or doing it on a spreadsheet for your financials, that gets you only so far. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you manage a few things in business, you manage people, money, and stuff. Right. The thing you should manage the least is stuff, right? I mean, so you should have a software system that allows you to order quickly, get what you need, and, and get on with your day, right? So you're spending less time managing inventory and stuff. Sure. Uh, you want to really manage your money well, but I mean, managing the financials of the business, the income and the outgo, again, easier to track, less time spent on that allows you to manage the most difficult thing in our business, which is the H factor, the humans, you know? Yes. Uh, and if that's just you, if you're the only guy or gal in the business, you still need to manage you. And managing you means your time and your effort and your energy and your direction. Um, right. And the less time you spend clicking on a keyboard for financial stuff or scheduling appointments or whatever it is, um, 
it becomes a force multiplier, what we said in the military. So it's been 31 years in the Army, and I can tell you uh, the small force multiplying things are, are the huge things, right? So right. Uh, software is, is, I think, a key component to your business. It can't be everything. Um, you still have to have a human touch. You still have to have service. You still have to have all those pieces. But for it to be able to take stuff off your plate and to make management of your business easier and then understanding what you're doing with it, it's a key component. Um, I don't think in this day and age you can honestly say you can run a detailed business without some sort of software to manage. That's our, our thought Just as well. Nowhere around. Right. Doesn't matter if you're on ours or, or you know one of our uh, competitions, I guess you'd say. But you know, if you're on a software, you're kind of you know steps ahead of, of the people that are around you in your competition. So yeah. that's a, that's really cool. Yeah, and the only thing I'll say about softwares is um, it's like everything else. It's like detail suppliers. Um, have a relationship with your software supplying company. And that doesn't mean you have to know the president of the company. Let's face it, um, you know, business is business, right? So if you got a good sales rep and you've got a good relationship there um, and you can work with that person to solve problems, nothing is perfect, nothing is out of the box, exactly what you want it to be. That's right. Um, if you know anything about shoes, you know that, right? I mean, unless you're having custom made shoes. Um, but all softwares are customizable with the good companies. With the great companies, they, they really get dialed in. So have a relationship with your supplier, your provider, um, have an open conversation with them. You know, too many folks, I think, don't tell you the bad stuff. Right. I don't get better if you tell me how great I am. I mean, that's right. my head gets bigger, but exactly. I don't, you know, otherwise yeah. I'm get better. So, you know, sometimes you gotta talk to us about our, our things that it, it maybe isn't doing. And when you're in the software game, dude, it's not personal. You know, if the software isn't built to do X, Y, Z, just tell us, hey, I needed to do X, Y, Z. We can work on that, you know. Right. So, I think that's the big thing for me is is have a relationship with whoever it is you work with. Because I'm with you guys, um, you know. Everything is an awful product if you don't interact with it and get good service out of it. And oh, part absolutely. of getting good service out of it is is engaging with you know the people who sell it to you. So yeah, cool. Deal, and I've man. seen great stuff, and people go, "Oh, it's trash." Well, why is it trash? Well, I didn't use it. That's exactly the, we, we run into that all the time. But, you know, if you if you took a, you know, gave somebody a bottle of ceramic, professional ceramic that's never installed it before and just told them, you know, uh, uh, go go have fun and, and, you know, use it on that vehicle. Well, you're not going to get a good, you know, result out of it. Um, there has to be some sort right. of, you know, instruction or, you know, um, a process that can be repeated. And that's definitely something that. You know, we feel like the software certainly is going to help guys out with. It's just kind of automate those processes that can be automated, you know, without losing a personal touch to yeah. it. And um, really just uh, helping out the industry is, like you said, like the IDA. That's how we kind of look at it. Just trying to, you know, make the industry um, as professional as it can possibly look um, from our end. So Yeah, and Mitch does a good job. Yeah, and there's a lot of us, man, who either have a magnet in our head uh, or just, you know, Technology is different, right? I, I came up with the Apple IIc was the latest, greatest computer when I hit high school. So right. uh, I learned COBOL as a computer programming language in high school. So right. this takes you how far back I am. Um, I was around for kind of when computers started to integrate into society in a greater way. Um, but I am not like the kids today. You know, the guys who are 28 years old, they have a totally different grasp on technology. Mm -hmm. and so. For me, I know when I get a new software, I have QuickBooks to do my my soft, my management for my, my Detail Plus business. Uh, and I was having this conversation yesterday. It's like, I'm not a power user. I know enough to be dangerous to myself. So I know I need help. Uh, and that's why I say, when you have a great software company, they're gonna come with support. And that's the win. That's awesome, man. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming yes. on today. Um, you know, really excited to, to see that dream maker in action. I hope we get some videos uh, next week out there and uh, uh, just really love so to. So Wednesday uh, is the grand reveal. We'll put it on Facebook for you guys. It'll be on Instagram, it'll be on TikTok, it'll be on everything. Um, yeah, Wednesday is the reveal day and it'll be awesome. done with Gordon McCall um, and Rennie and Bob and the guys at the Rag Company. Uh, we will have the entire team on hand and we are gonna go do that. So uh, last shameless plug for the IDA. Yes, sir. Thursday night, RG Burgers in Carmel uh, is a little burger joint uh, there that we've gone to for now four or five years. We're having an IDA meet and greet a week 
from now, basically Thursday night at 7 p.m. at RG Burgers. If you are a detailer and you are working Monterey, come have a burger with us, have a beer with us, hang out. Uh, the entire Detail Mafia will, team will be there. So we got eight, uh, 24 of us on the team this year. Uh, we'll be there. We want to see you guys there. Come out, join us. Uh, there are going to be 100 plus great detailers at that event. I'd love to see as many of you guys as I can because I think that's the cool, right? I mean, the opportunity to work that show, not many people get it. And, you know, let's get together. Let's have a beer and, and catch up and, and have some fun Thursday night next week. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you again so yeah, much, Keith, you, Keith. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again in the future, man. You have a great day. Thank you, Neil. Got it. We'll keep uh, keep an eye on you guys, and we'll uh, we'll tag you in next week's uh, review. Sounds <laughs> great, buddy. All right. Thanks, man. Have a good one. All uh -huh. right. And so, like thanks, guys. Bucky needs to make its way down there. Yeah, we need to take <laughs> off. And, hey, I'm ready to go to Monterey <laughs> without a doubt. Hey, Dustin uh, will be back. Just jump on a plane come out and see us. Oh, that's, oh, right. Right. That, that's hey, what perfect. we need to do. That's what I like it. Hey, He'll appreciate that. that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, uh, last part of the show, you all know, I know y'all stuck around to hear uh, me butcher another hack, but this week, <laughs> <laughs> this week we're going to run our hack versus hack. What is this, Jessica? Where, where are we at? Hack that's or hack. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to let Mr. Billy, the professional here, tell us a little bit about the hack on towels. Mr. Billy, what you got? Well, uh, one of the ways, well, some of the problems we have is ceramic in our towels, and it creates a problem if we don't get that cleaned out. So this week's hack or, ha hack, or hack? It's just the hack part. <laughs> okay. Simple one is uh, we, put them, we put ours in a drum with uh, some vinegar and water, hot water, and um, it seems to release some of the ceramic coating and uh, gets it out of the towel so that we can get more life out of them. There you go. So it just kind of brings the ceramic up to the top a bit, sure. and you can just uh, throw it, do your normal wash cycle, um, and then that'll kind of get some of that out. Yep. Well, that's pretty cool, guys. I hope you take that to the bank, and uh, we certainly uh, appreciate your – uh, watching today and yeah, listening and uh, certainly look forward to seeing you again next week guys thanks so much thanks Ryan for having me hey our pleasure